If you've ever been on the fence about watching it, I'd say it's time you took the plunge. But I would caution you, if you like the series, you should avoid the movie. Ooh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. If you're a regular viewer of mine, you're probably aware that I previously made a video discussing my thoughts on the Vision of Escaflona anime series. Unless you've stumbled across this video by accident and have no idea who I am, then you really wouldn't know that, but that's not important. In the video, I described that the show was essentially something I had ignored and disregarded back in the day until finally deciding to check it out based on a recommendation from my brother-in-law. That video ended up being in many ways an apology from me to the series for my underestimating it based on the marketing of the initial Americanized dub that was aired on Fox Kids back in the 90s. I had written it off without giving it a proper chance or even seeking out maybe the original, unedited version to see what the show was truly about. I made two mistakes in that video. I've made a huge mistake. Well, probably more than two for people that are actually fact-checking me, but two that I would actually like to admit to and address in this video. The first of the two mistakes that I made was almost unforgivable. Usually I make a point to talk about, or at least make a passing acknowledgement of the soundtrack and music in an anime because music is a large part of why I enjoy the genre. I'm still listening to a number of songs from various anime of my youth on a fairly regular basis, so much so that my sister even managed to secure an autographed CD by the legendary TM Revolution and gave it to me as a gift. A treasure that I have sadly lost some years ago. Unfortunately, in my Vision of Escaflone video, I got so roped up in writing about the show itself that I somehow forgot to talk about the soundtrack, and a few folks commented rightly calling me out for this blasphemous offense. So, as a way of an apology, let me say this. The soundtrack to the Vision of Escaflone series is certainly fantastic. Yoko Kano's work here is wonderful. Too many times I find that fantasy anime stick to a particular style or motif, which isn't a bad thing, but the music of Escaflone contains a good variety of different styles and always help keep things fresh while never feeling like it's out of place in the setting. Plus, anything that includes Gregorian chants and bagpipes in the same soundtrack is an instant win in my book. Now, all that to say, I'm certainly no music critic. My favorite band from the last 20 years is The Darkness, so to say that my preferences in music center around cheesy 80s-ness is a massive understatement, so I'm probably not the best qualified to talk too much about soundtracks outside of my personal taste. But, that being said, Escaflone has some fantastic music that amplify its mood and themes perfectly, at least in my opinion. You happy now? The second folly I made was that at the end of the video, I proved that I didn't learn from my previous mistakes of dismissing things without giving them their fair shake. And this was evidenced in my suggestion at the end that enjoyers of the series should avoid watching the movie. After reading through the comments yet again, I saw that the movie had its fair share of defenders out there. So I started wondering if maybe I had once again let my own personal bias dismiss the movie unfairly. The Rotten Tomatoes score certainly seemed to agree with me, but then again, I've disagreed with the reviews found on that particular website a number of times in the past myself. Move past it, will you? So now that some time has passed and I've been able to digest the Vision of Escaflone anime series, and probably more importantly, forget some things about it as well, I've decided it's time to revisit the film and ask myself, was I wrong about Escaflone, the movie? First, I want to explain what I mean by saying I let my own personal bias affect my opinion of the movie. You have to understand that my knowledge of Escaflone before watching the series was, I knew it existed and it seemed to be aimed at children. That's it. That's the only real information that I had. I wasn't even aware that there was a movie at the time that I watched the series. After finishing the show and being impressed, I noticed that there was also a movie that was available for streaming. 
I spent literally zero time or effort researching or reading about what the movie was, and for some reason in my mind I jumped to the conclusion that the movie would act as some sort of sequel or continuation of the story of the series. I discovered pretty quickly, however, that my assumption was wrong, and probably stupid to begin with, and that the Vision of Escaflone movie was its own thing entirely. It's a reimagining of the story that contained a large amount of differences compared to the show that I had just watched. So unfortunately, this led to a situation where I just didn't like the movie on the base of it because it wasn't the same as the characters and the story that I had just watched and enjoyed so much. And that is a very disingenuous way to form an opinion on a piece of art. So it's time to correct that and to judge this film as its own thing entirely, which is the only fair way to really critique it. Then again, keep in mind, I'm just some asshole on YouTube, and I have no film credentials whatsoever, so it's really just my opinion anyway, and nobody probably gives a fuck about what that opinion is, except for uh, you per people here. Hi. Thanks for watching this, by the way. First, I want to go over the things that I appreciate and enjoy about the Escaflone movie. Right off the bat, we're treated to some fantastic visuals. While the television series was generally wonderful with its artwork and design, you instantly see the film is going to surpass the show in production quality, which makes sense given the budget comparison and the length of one film versus 26 episodes. The music that accompanies this scene is also fantastic. It's atmospheric and mystical, using some clear classical eastern sounds, and really sets a tone for the world that we're about to be immersed in. The movie also doesn't waste any time in showing us that this interpretation of Vaughn is far more violent and brutal than his series counterpart. This also shows us that the movie itself was going to be far more violent and brutal than the series in general, which I'm definitely approving of. The other difference that we see early on that I enjoy about the movie versus the show is the interpretation of Hitomi as a character. After establishing that she had visions of Vaughn as a child, implying that her connection to him has been with her for her whole life, we see this version of Atome as much darker as well, and in a way that is probably far more relatable. She's apathetic about being alive, constantly feels tired, has quit the track team, is actively aware that all the other people around her seem to be happy and normal, and that she's somehow different from them, hypothesizing that if she ceased to exist, or faded away, nothing in the world around her would change. It's this disposition on life that causes for someone to reach out to her, calling to her from another realm as a kindred spirit, referring to her as the Chosen One, the Wing Goddess. Gaia is then revealed to her in a trippy and stunning display as the world rises up and consumes the entire sky, accompanied by a truly epic piece of the score. Is this a dream? Or a vision? No. This must be real. My wish has come true. The movie is certainly going for an epic feel, and it nails it more often than not. Another aspect of the film that I would say I enjoy is the arrival of my favorite over-the-top psychopath, Dylan Dow, or Dylan Dow as it's pronounced here. He's as brutal and malicious as ever. He and Von each have also received some impressive magical upgrades as depicted in their first encounter. What I like about this version of Dylan Dow in particular is that we see Falcon dishes out some severe punishments torturing his subordinate to show his disappointment, leaving us to connect the dots that Dylan Dow's own unforgiving leadership style is something he has learned through pain and suffering. The only complaint that I would make here is that we spend far too little time with Dylan Dow in the movie for my taste. I love this little psychopath and I can never get enough of him. Overall, the movie does a lot of things well in terms of the atmosphere it's trying to create. There's definitely some world building here, though it's mostly transmitted through visual flair. Gaia feels more strange and mystical or otherworldly here, thanks in large part to the art direction and musical score when compared to the series. Although there are still some problems with the movie that I have on a personal level that no matter how much I try to separate it from the series, I just can't help but notice. One aspect of the film that I found jarring was the connection between Vaughn and Hitomi, or more specifically, Hitomi's introduction to Gaia. I did find it neat that when she's transported to this new world, she finds herself actually entombed inside Escaflone. Vaughn, however, instantly recognizes her as the Wing Goddess, although he begins to doubt this a little bit once Escaflone disappears. All in all, to say that their relationship to each other as depicted in the movie from the beginning is far different from the series is an understatement. Probably the most interesting change in comparison to the series is the factions at play in the world of Gaia itself. 
When we meet Vaughn, he's already in league with Alan. And by the way, it's good to see that Alan is still the more accomplished swordsman. The antagonists of the film are also different from the series, although really mostly in name only. The antagonists are known as the Black Dragon Empire. Falcon and the Empire have already laid waste to the kingdoms and nations of Gaia by the time the movie starts. Alan, Vaughn, and their resistance are really all that remains to stand against them. Most of the information we get about Vaughn and the events that preceded Hitome's arrival come in the form of an exposition dump from Merle. We don't get to see the destruction of Vaughn's kingdom, how he establishes an alliance of necessity with Alan, we're just told that this is the state of things, which is forgivable considering the story naturally has to be condensed for a 90 minute feature. As much as I've tried to judge the film on its own merits, I unfortunately can't help but observe huge differences in the characters between the movie and the series. The movie's focus is obviously on Vaughn and Atome as characters. As a result, many of the characters we know from this series have been relegated to supporting roles, if they appear at all. And in some cases, the characters that do appear bear almost no similarity to their series counterpart. To really enjoy this movie, you have to accept that that's the way that this is and be okay with it. I also feel that while the action and battle sequences here are wonderfully animated and fun, it's barely a sliver of the action that we get in the 26 episode series. Again, this is understandable, but nonetheless I find it disappointing. Finally, my major gripe here is that we don't get the same level of development in the relationship between Von and Atome, even though the movie focuses heavily on those two in particular. Hitome, in my opinion, is handled better as a character overall in the movie, but Vaughn feels very one-note and stale. He's always alone and carries a sadness with him. Those are basically his character traits. It works to a degree, but it isn't all that interesting. In fact, I feel like the only way to appreciate these two characters in particular is by having an understanding of their connection from having previously watched the show. <laughs> the Which makes it hard to judge them on their own merits as depicted in the movie. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So after all my rambling, the question remains, was I wrong about the Escaflone movie? Well, I would have to say, yes, I was wrong. I said fans of the series should avoid the movie. I no longer think that that's true. If you can separate the two from one another, there's a lot to enjoy here. It's wonderfully animated, the score, in my opinion, actually surpasses the soundtrack of the series in some ways, and it oozes with ambiance. You can really get wrapped up in the visual representation of Gaia. But to not acknowledge it has obvious flaws in pacing, character development, and a far less interesting story overall would be disingenuous. Ultimately, I would have to say that this comment from 2B2B, great name by the way, says it perfectly. Ironically, having posted this while I was finalizing the script for this video. Note, do not watch the movie after the series, or you will have a biased opinion against it. It is good and beautiful on its own. I'd say that's sound advice, and I wish I had done it the other way around. Unfortunately, I can't go to a world where I decided to watch the movie before the show. So in the end, the choice is yours. I still prefer the series, but I dismissed this film based on my own biases, and I'm glad I took the time to revisit it after acknowledging that I did so. Maybe you will too.